I was a 3D graphic artist developing games who became a writer, who became a creative lead, who became the global head of a startup uh, and who's now en route to becoming the CMO uh, in a QSR entity which will have both food and beverage brands. We're a consumer tech brand which deals in space and it solves problems for you as such related to space. Sometimes it could be travel related. And I think if you start looking and, and our main purpose of existence is to is to drive demand for small medium hotel owners. And if you start looking at things from that lens, it just unravels like very, very seamlessly. And like you said, the India angle is just gold. I mean, you know, as someone who's who's been around that the whole Tamram boy and the study uh, or the bong fastidiousness with eating, right? Or the father and son where the father wants to listen to his own music in his space and the son is getting into metal and the father might just like disapprove of it. But, you know, he'd be like, OK, you know what, for a few few hundred bucks, I can do this. I can I can get you out of my ears for a while. And uh, here's what we understood from them. It's the women who pick where they're going to stay, when they're going to stay. It's the woman who takes the call. The guy simply presses the button. And we probe them further, They, the women tell us that they're not necessarily comfortable having the OEO app on their phone. Alternate profession could have been? Jam maker. I love, I love the thought of making jams and I would have messed around with them as much as I mess around with brand. Hello fellows, welcome to the next episode of Jagged with Jasravi. For conversations at the edge, with thought leaders from the marketing, branding, and the business world, subscribe to my channel, Jagged with Jasravi. Conversations that ignite new ideas, ideas that have rough and sharp edges. Hello, Mayur. Thrilled to have you on my show. Thanks, Jasravi. Uh, rough and sharp is what you asked for, so you'll get exactly that. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Seatbelts on. <laughs> Uh, so, Mayur, Mayur Hola, do you have a Spanish connection? Yeah, it makes it easy for me to travel, at least to the Spanish-speaking countries, because they've got my surname down right. Uh, it makes, it makes saying hi pretty easy. Uh, yeah. And I do get my leg pulled a lot, at least through school I did, with jokes that surrounded the fact that it's a good thing I was born around Holi, which I was, and not around Lodi, which I was not. If I requested you to tweet your profile, Mayur, what would you say? Yeah, never settle for living just the one life in one life. Um, I was a 3D graphic artist developing games who became a writer, who became a creative lead, who became the global head of a startup uh, and who is now en route to becoming the CMO uh, in a QSR entity which will have both food and beverage brands. Oh my and God. And something new uh, everywhere he goes and in everything he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So let's let's now, uh, I think the audiences who are not aware, there will be very few who are not, uh, let them get to the behind, of, behind the scenes of what transpired between a few of very, very celebrated campaigns uh, and I begin with come to Oyo. So, Mayu, did you guys know when this was getting conceptualized when, and you guys were thinking of doing it, that this would be, you know, such a unique campaign? So I'll start before the start even of this campaign, because I think the, the context that, that comes with a brand like Oyo should just needs to be laid out in all its rawness and with all its rough edges, as I said, I promised I would get, right? If we were to think about the un unorganized um, small and medium hotel segment in India, let's go back a, a decade and a half, right? And let's think about, you know, when you and I were traveling right out of college or even much after, uh, either you had star rated hotels to stay at or you didn't really know where you could stay at. Maybe, you know, my dad was in the defense. If I'm going to the hills, I'll ask for help and say, hey, can I be put up in the mess? Uh, can you put, put me uh, help put me up in the Gymkhana club? If you're going to Kasoli, there's the Kasoli club, right? 
uh, or uh, I knew someone, um, I knew Rahul Bose's father, we stayed at their house when my dad was posted in Kasali. So like dad, can you or mom, can you call them up uh, and maybe we can get a room from them because I'm going with my my friends and I just want to like, you know, shack up over there. So that was the state of things, if you recall, before we could afford the star rated hotels uh, or it was guest houses, government guest houses, etc. There was nowhere else that you could actually go to and, and say, hey, you know what, I know I'm going to be... I know where I'm going to be staying and I know that I can rely on that, right? So if you think about it, it's a very young people's state of mind. Older people don't go into the unknown, frankly, right? Uh, having said that, uh, middle class, that is us, you know, there is there is so many Indias that we all oc- occupy, right? India still say, walks into a hotel, you know, my, my gym instructor, for instance, he says, sir, we to nikal lete hain. Location working say hoti hai, hum jate hai usme. Right? So I'm just I just this I just want to lay this out as, as the dichotomy that is India. And also it's a very classist society that we all live in. Right? So a brand like Oyo, and I and I Oyo is one example. There are many examples. Big Bazaar was another example. Brands that that provide value, reliability. And a little bit of, you know, uh, essential hygiene in general tend to be looked down upon in our society. That's just how it is. You know, even Big Big Bazaar went about it in the right way. They Ultimately, of course, they were the whole setting up a food hall, etc., which brought some sheen. Uh, But it was always first up sneered at a little bit. Is it for me is a question that would be asked, right? Uh, I'll go to a modern bazaar. I'll go to a Spencer's. I'll go to a nature's basket, those are for me, right? So I think this, the fraternity as it were, and I, the fraternity is the corporate fraternity, uh, you know, marketing people, government, so on and so forth. The opinion forming fraternity sneers at value brands. Uh, it, it might be slightly controversial to say it, but it is the truth. I, I don't think we look in the mirror hard enough. As such, brands like this, I draw a parallel with a brand called... Um, you know, in the in the uh, hygiene and protection space, there was Nirod that was launched by Government of India. And then there was Durex, which Racket later brought in. They both fulfill the same purpose. But do you notice the difference in your mind the moment I said the first one and the second one? The second one is a brand that is created. The first one is a brand that got appropriated by a generation that made it the butt of all jokes. Right? This is where Oya found itself because actually it never created a brand. So if you search up YouTube, if you look at all the memes, etc. that Oya attracts, it is a result of the fact that when it was launched, and it often happens with startups, you want to focus on product, you want to focus on supply, you want to focus on operations. Brand is something that comes much, much, much down the value chain. And invariably in, in consumer tech, you find brand occupying a bit of a window dressing role. That is the brand I inherited unabashedly without any filters. That is the brand I inherited. So when we saw, you know, when we set about creating a brand now, a brand which has only really been created on the dent of having the largest outdoor campaign in the country with those red circles on buildings, right? That is OYO, OYO the brand was created. It had a product market fit. The technology worked and in a few seconds, you were able to book a, a room anywhere in the country. That's why people are onboarding as uh, hotel owners. That's what gives you spread. And then there are these circles everywhere you go. Around you, if you if you look around you, you walk around you, within a few kilometers, you'll find an oil. It is guaranteed. We have, we have an oil every 16 square kilometers in this country. Right? Uh, and as such, that's what you inherit when you first walk in. Then you look at the reputation you have online, and that is the reputation that is affecting the brand everywhere. Right? So you look at your biggest channel, YouTube. Right? As I said, search up Oyo, you'll know exactly what I mean. Cool. And and thereafter is when you realize I need to create a brand out of what pop culture has created, right? Because I don't have a voice on YouTube as brand Oyo, right? I have information and then I have all of this mass of lewdness and trolls and mm-hmm. and, and sex and seeminess and, and rumors of cameras, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And uh, sometimes when people have a bad experience, they also take to, of course, uh, social media. And you have all of that representing the brand. That is where we started. I think it's super important for every conversation we have, no matter which 
which campaign or project we take up because that once we've covered this i think we can leave this aside and say this is status quo and honestly it remains status quo through all the time that we have done simply because to overwhelm almost uh, all of this you need large amounts of uh, spends to be able to do that consistently so you, the brand thereof was built by pop culture for over about 8 9 years you need at least that much time and effort and spends for you to now to cover that up yeah um and we're one third of the way down that journey without any of that spend frankly so i think i'm also calling that out so that's the atmosphere you enter in and then that's where i i get a, a bunch of people into the room people who've been old timers etc and say okay what is this brand mm-hmm. okay uh i can tell you what i think but i don't think i should at all i should just listen and then three things pop out every time you talk to any of the stalwarts of oyo oyo is picked on the basis of three pillars to this days and to this day which is location price availability right where do you need to go you will always find a, a value for money room uh and it will always be available given our spread and our depth right in terms of supply to this day that's how people search and and look and people who are used to the platform are able to find a room within 5 to 6 seconds if they have if they are aware of it okay so that's number 1 number 2 sure you have a basic hygiene promise right and there are things like uh, air conditioning which which again you know stuff stuff you hear from people who are using it on a day to day basis is actually the most helpful thing so again my instructor comes in and says you know he lives in a suburb uh, just just on the outskirts of delhi in a place called mahibalpur and it's like sir mere ko to 5 baje uthna hota hai aur yahan pe light chali jati hai to mere bagal mein ek hoya hai main aap pe 5 6 rupaye deta hu raat ko ja ke so leta hu kyunki mere client to wait kar rahe hain subah subah ki right so so as such you know if you start these dots start joining in even before you start working on the brand because you realize that just as pop culture has created a brand of all all their own people have appropriated it into usage all their own or there is potential for you to have them appropriate it there are stray cases of x y and z i remember talking to a girl called anushka she is she is in new zealand now and she went to fellowship etc and she used to run a program called inferno for us and anushka really just what what inferno was just two hour long chats uh, the nature of which we are having like unstructured free wheeling which is why i'm rambling so much i should control that and uh, and she would just talk to people about their experiences their reasons their motivations to use a room a value for money room etc and one time anushka came back to me she's had the most insane conversation with a couple who live in a small town who actually booked a room to fight right and it blew my mind because you know all the data and you know startups and consumer tech in general just teaches you so much about understanding data and doubling down on what's working mm-hmm. and here's what data would have told us men book over here right 80% of our bookings are by men more in fact right uh, couples form the majority of our bookings especially in uh, urban centers and even small towns frankly yeah leave out leisure destination destinations and most of it is uh, you know it can be as much as 70% sometimes right Uh, on an, on a whole uh, lifetime average it might be 60 65% that's couples right um, but you could never have learned this from data ever you could only have learned this by talking to consumers that hum wo yo book karte hain ladai karne ke liye to fight because uh, we don't have enough space in the house we live in okay so that's the seed that was laid in before ever doing any strat work and nothing we just we knew these things before we started and when we decided that the brand needs to establish presence on major platforms these these are the dots we knew we had to join right and that's when i requested a bunch of people like i said to come into the room from oyo side and i got in bassi from the other side and i said you know uh, we need to arrive at who we are as a brand right and where we landed was that you know india steps out and remember we did this before covid india still steps out by the way because covid again the work from home luxury is a very niche luxury to have uh, india still needs to step out to make progress in its life and and yeah that's where we land in saying you know india needs to step out right and oyo enables that because of everywhere that oyo is present because wherever you need to go for whatever your reason oyo is there to enable exactly that right uh match that with this reality of india's lack of space right 
and i think that that's something that uh, you know we also worked with a gentleman called jitendra dabas from mccann one of my favorite uh, start people to work with and then the whole space angle actually jitu got in right and and that's what the combination of the work we did with both of these gentlemen and with the people who were resident uh, at oyo is is perhaps i think what led to and the, all the conversations we had with our consumers i think conversation actually led to a campaign that we felt the moment we were uh, creating it uh, we knew that we were onto something that has the potential to transform the brand and not just the brand we felt it could transform the business so lack of space married with our spread married with what we we could solve for and ultimately leading to progress those doits uh, when they joined and when we handed over the project to the script room and i al- always wanted to work with these guys you know they they're the low bangalore guys they've been killing it you know some great work on great brands across fast track titan uh, paper boat you know ram sam and his team had been just 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 for the best agency in the country for the longest time and when they uh, headed out and started the script room and i came over here it was just serendipity i knew i had to work with them and we handed over all of these stories that anushka had from her chats including the one with the fight which actually got a film made out of including their own experiences and this mm-hmm. uh, this brief uh, we knew that when we solved for india space and led to progress we were on to something uh, that would be like i said transformative did we did we see awards coming we didn't even think of entering awards at the time frankly yeah. uh, i think this is a campaign that is a long running campaign it was always meant to be a widespread multilingual the reason to go to ram sam was also that he could think in language it was not a campaign that i was ever happy with uh, you know transliterating or anything it just had to be written in that language and conceived in that language to run in that region equally it had to be a campaign that could be understood by anyone anyone anywhere in the world that's how telegraphic it could be whether you understood a word of what was happening right yeah. so it's 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 very layered when i say when i look at it in retrospect but equally it's very simple and i think the simplicity of solving for space leading to progress if you ask me every strat guy or or lady in the world looks at that and says that is pure and i think yeah. that's why yeah 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 so um, oh, it was a really long explanation i i let you ramble because it was totally making sense okay <laughs> now for my audience is i'll just um, you know pick up a few threads here that they must appreciate at this point in time is uh, and, and let me know if if i've got this right that oyo is a category in itself it disrupted the tourism industry by coming up with value for money rooms and the very strength it had to be given a relevance from the consumers uh, life and that had not happened you know uh, because every everything everything was just there so location like you were saying uh, and i was reading up uh, what you shared earlier location was not exactly how uh, when people are going for vacation that they would want so it was slightly in the interiors so tier 2 tier 3 cities people would prefer some other locations despite you know other things getting a big a uh, big uh, you know tick in the checklist so how to make its strengths really shine and its perceived disadvantage uh, you know turn around in how it appeared i mean that is the brilliance of the campaign uh, and and you came up with and, and these were real insights you know that is the beauty of it because it started from real insights real conversations that people are already looking at it is that this possibility already existed that i can use it as an extended you know space like like your um, um your uh, instructor gym instructor shared and then anushka shared and all these insights have you know found a way in the campaigns and that's why it's so authentic and that's why it's so true for the brand and that's why it uh, perhaps did what it did so 11 films <laughs> across 3 years and then you kept the uh, cultural truths you know like like middle class is not going to spend just of uh, on frivolous reasons so portal to progress as you called it uh and 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 guys you have to see the campaigns you have to see all the 11 campaigns in different languages 
they're so endearing. I can look at all the eleven campaigns, you know, at one go, and then go again and watch. You know, that's that's the that's the warmth and the beauty uh, in the campaigns. But then, like you said, the strategy looked at uh, the, the the intention was very clear, and it was like, okay, we have to break ground, and we have to look look for breakthrough inside. So, yeah, I think well, you know, beautifully summed up, and I think yeah, you know, Ritesh always. has said and he always maintains he's very consistent with this he started the business for hotel owners so if you ask for oyo's narrative from oyo it will always begin with you know what we wanted to help or enable hotel owners because we knew that if we did that we would be able to help the consumers it's the hotel owners who run the these hotels and and you know i we don't i think calling ourselves a travel brand was by itself it's something that i questioned i i think we are we happen to be in the hospitality category simply because there is no expanded view of the category i think we are in the space category i think we provide space wherever you might be if it is leisure and as such travel and hospitality we are there very much there uh, are we very strong there no and if you start thinking of from the hotel owner side you will have the answer to why we are not strong there we are present in greater numbers where it is challenging to create demand for hotel owners in leisure destinations which have people automatically coming as such they are not as challenged to create demand right whereas in a neighborhood location or on the highway or in non traditional locations so to speak it is more challenging to create demand it is that that we had to solve for and once that is a very important detail that i perhaps missed but it is that that needed to be created demand for and thereafter you don't create demand for that from out of towners you don't ask people from out of town to come stay in a neighborhood location which it doesn't it doesn't solve their purpose they might want to stay if you're coming to delhi if they're coming to bombay they say you know what i want to go see the caves the ajanta elora elora caves i want to see gateway of india i want to go to juhu beach can i be located nearer to places that i want to go see right so who's going to go to all of these places in the same city right and how can they be used now and then you come to the whole point that you said and that's where the the dots joined of what peep some people were already using it as and and of course yes the final layer, so it had to be a solution of for space it had to be an extension of your space mm. that we were providing because it was right there you know you throw a stone you'll hit it so you know what if you if you don't have space where you are well there there it is right there and here's technology making that space available for you so we are a tech brand we are a consumer tech brand which deals in space and it solves problems for you as such related to space sometimes it could be travel related and i think if you start look and, and and our main purpose of existence is to is to drive demand for small medium hotel owners and if you start looking at things from that lens it just unravels like very very seamlessly and like you said the india angle is is gold i mean you know as someone who's who's been around that the old tamram boy and the study uh, or the bong fastidiousness with eating right or the father and son where the father wants to listen to his own music in his space and the son is getting into metal and the father might just like disapprove of it but you know he'll be like okay you know what for a few few hundred bucks i can do this i can i can get you out of my ears for a while it might be summer holidays and that's when we ran it so yeah if you go each one there's the guju family who travel and mm-hmm. even though the old guy the guys are all old but the youngest he might be 50 or 60 but he still gets bullied by his older, older brothers he still has to do all the packing so yeah it's it's just it it's it's hugely layered but all very logical layers and very enduring layers like you said yeah and uh, a very important thing that you said um, you know i think the beauty of the entire thing was that you know you, you guys were totally ready to challenge everything and start from the core you know like when you say how do we define the category and yeah. is that limiting or restricting i mean if if one asks that question and is open to the answer i mean yeah. that itself is such a spiral yeah. so uh, amazing they're going to put all the ads here i think uh, 
uh, whatever we can, uh, dear, dear my audience, you'll get a flavor of it if you've not seen it. Okay. 11 multilingual films released across India across three years. Year one positioned Oyo as the quick next door escape. Why I have to pick something for my aunt, yeah. Year 2 positioned OU as a utilitarian place that solved for your special needs. Da. Year 3 positioned OU as an enabler of progress by providing space to focus. How to study in that house, Ma? Pakat weed drilling where? And so, by repositioning what a hotel room could be, we convinced people living in the same city to come to Oyo. Okay, now, uh, like uh, Mayur started uh, in the very beginning, uh, that the image, the, the, the associations that the brand stood for itself was restricting uh, who would consider it for themselves. The, the reasons also had to be built in, considering its location, etc. But is it for me? Is it not for me? Uh, that itself had to be looked at. Uh, now, I'm, I'm talking about the three different Ks uh, that were leveraged. Uh, yeah. And, and, and it's all, again, amazing that, you know, like they're pointing in such different directions and for different segments. So, uh, Kjo is for the luxury segment. Puki, again, such an endearing. <laughs> I think the internet said thank you to you after that because of the memes that happened or the conversation that it generated. That Asi reach guy, Kuki was there. And then Krish for the young guys, which was again, Kalki Kal dekhenge. <laughs> and you actually had Kalki in the campaign. <laughs> Who was in that uh, movie uh, that, that which, which was all about friends, uh, you know, going out together. So it, it, it was yeah. also coming together. But <clears throat> it's still very different uh, exercises for very different campaign uh, segments. Yeah. And, you know, the brand perceptions are getting changed in a big way. Uh, how how did this whole thing happen? How did uh, the ch you know challenge got identified? Which were yeah. the insights that you worked with? Look, you know, there are the people who drive your business, and and then there are the people who drive opinion about your brand. And in Oyo's case, and I think this is true for for many brands. I feel let's talk about a brand we all like a lot. And I feel it's uh, perceived, it's not share market valuation, but it's, it's, it's perception, it's valuation in our, in our minds is far higher because of the brand that has been built. I think Airbnb is a great example of a brand like that. Right? Closer home, I feel there are so many that we're familiar with. Cadbury does this year on year. Uh, and it's not just a recent work, it's over the decades that they've, they, they've built brand very carefully, very lovingly almost. And it shows through in uh, everything they do. And it, it shows through in how people might feel about it. Not the best chocolate in the world, mind you, right? Uh, and again, um, not expensive. Not inexpensive, but not expensive, right? But our feelings about it are are very different. Uh, Zomato in recent times has, a, has built a brand purely on social media. It's outstanding, right? What they've done. Uh, and, and we love the brand. Uh, and, you know... You, I think in recent times, Swiggy sort of also made that attempt, uh, but Zomato is far ahead in terms of the brand they've created, right? And that is the valuation I'm referring to. Right? And I took all of these examples because I feel these brands attract a premium because of all the investment they've made in brand building. And because of all the various audiences they appeal to in the manner they have gone about what they have done. There are many Cadbury's. There's not just one Cadbury, right? 
uh, you know, there is the whole meethe mein kya hai, if you remember, aaj kya bana hai, karela, to kal bhi bana tha, to haan, wo kal wala hi hai, mm-hmm. meethe mein kya hai. It, it has positioned itself in, in this, you know, heightened, on, on a heightened pedestal in your mind, saying, you know what, this can overcome all types of banality in my life, including karela. Right? Uh, so it's it's appropriated a different kind of aspiration, not the aspiration in the very cliched black and white sense of uh, uh, you know moneyed aspiration. It's emotional aspiration that is gone and occupied. You know, um, guy gives something to his wife and says, "Ye kya hai? Cadbury, ye to tum mujhe roz dete ho." So, "Ha, ye main tumhe roz deta." So you know, it's I I love you and I I give this to you and you know we don't talk about it but that's where I hold you. So it's not it's not the love of his life that he's holding in his hand. Uh, it's not just her. It's the bar of chocolate and they've basically equated those two. My favorite campaign for Cadbury is that, by the way. So I I quote it often, right? Um, I just think that when and this this work that you're referring to happened three years down the journey. It it happened just at the beginning of this year. We were on the verge of uh, listing. All the groundwork had been done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is uh, uh, just before the war, just before the market went south, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, just before we pulled the plug. And as such, you know, this this campaign and this work. It's not just the campaign, but this thinking had uh, not just dual, but it had multiple angles to it that we were also trying to to solve for. Of course, there's the business angle of you know families are such a large part of india's travel segment and this is travel as it's, as opposed to just stay which we just spoke about uh and and we, we we just don't have an in in there do we you know we not even thought of and if we if we at all are mentioned it's uh, it's it's not in a in a manner that families would be accepting of us so that's the business reason to 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 address families right the premium segment Let's face it. I mean, we don't have any business being present in that segment, even though we have premium brands, right? Mm-hmm. But our our uh, our perception is so overwhelming that you're not aware of them. And even if you were aware of them, I remember going to uh, you know a function recently, and a friend of mine, uh, his daughter was going to camp, right? And on the on route to camp, they were putting them up in was it four by Oyo in Zirapur? I think if I'm not wrong, it was four or was it five? He says, you know what, this came up and I'm glad you're here. I just wanted to check with you. It's it's fine, right? They said it's a star hotel. And I said, dude, it's a four-star, five-star. It's as good as any other hotel that you could find in that range. He said, okay, I'm relieved that you said it because I was like seriously worried because it says five by you. So, you know, that's the, that's the other one. You have premium segment brands. And these are business reasons. I'll also come to a whole other layer over here. And of course, you know, the whole young people and... Even the young people have a perception about how they want to, or a, um, they're very fixed about how they want to use you. If you're going in city, if you're going to drink up, if you're going to, you know, crash post work because you know going home two hours away is not worth the trouble. Uh, if you're going to go with a girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, all of that is fine. But if you're going to, you know, whatever Lonavla, if you're going to uh, Mona- Manali or wherever, we'll we'll look at something else. We'll Airbnb. It. We'll. It's a cool thing to do, right? Uh, and and that's again somewhere where you're falling. So all of these were business reasons that we'd been ob- observing over time. Here's the other reason: perception had to be radically addressed. So why, while you know the first campaign we spoke sort of skimmed just above the surface, right, of where the brand was, is there thereabouts really? It reflects reality. This campaign almost ignores reality, and it says I have to create a new reality. Because the shareholder who is going to invest with me, the investment houses, the the private entities who are looking at me, have to see see all of me in a very different way. They don't they don't know all of me, and I do need to appeal to them as well, right? So the wrapping around me also needs to be new and shiny. It just can't reflect reality or just keep tackling reality, which is being heaped upon me in any case by memers and trollers, right? So I think there's a dual. Uh, reasons, do or do or even travel reasons that you're trying to to do this, right? And then I think the most important thing was sure we can talk about the films, etc. But I think the most important realization we as a team have had over the last three years is the tighter we try and control things or hold on to things, the less we actually do. 
and i'll try and explain what we what i mean by that i think we had a long chat on who we are as a brand and what i think most brands need to do today and they are doing it increasingly uh, which is it's not necessarily important what you say about you it's more important what others say about you and when i say others i don't just mean the big celebs that you're paying for etc right that's fine it's it's always something that needs to start the big snowball that's going to create an avalanche later so that's the big celeb that's the bunch of influencers or micro influencers that you use to get the memes going but it's the memes that that come thereafter because you see them and you say hey you know what that's cool that's fun and it's not coming from a brand like if i ask you how many brands you follow on social media there'll be a certain limited few numbers that you actually follow the rest pop up on your feed from time to time and our effort was to just curate the manner in which our brand popped up on your feeds and it certainly did not and could not have popped up from the brand it had to pop up from people like you or people that you follow right and that was very very deliberate it was dis- disconcerting for a team that's tried to hold on to things very tightly to create a brand that they've seen you know hit at from all sides but it was very rewarding to finally do that because i see people quoting uh, phrases memes jokes and i know that hey you know what we seeded that one or you know you know what that's a result of what we seeded it's curated you're joking on me but you're joking me now in a manner that i okay with you joking me and that's what was done through all of this so we see the sheen or the cuteness of tuki uh, the sheen of ritik or and kejo and of course the business purposes that i outlined but actually for us the most important decision was hand over the brand let someone else curate it for you don't hold on to tight so mayu that's such an important thing that you're saying i mean that is the reality uh of today's times that you cannot control the brand you're not you cannot make one campaign and think that okay i've shaped the perception it is an ongoing everyday culture getting created and you know how do i like you said so beautifully how do i figure out in this conversation what part of consumers life thinking brain real estate do i uh, you know own yeah. some ass- yes absolutely yes yeah and because they, they, i i'll i'll move to something else also that you uh, did that was uh, in that same space so uh, yeah so so you said okay i i am changing the conversation <laughs> and i know which direction it will go and i will decide the direction but i know i cannot control it you know i mean that's the beauty beautiful paradox um and 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 like you said it had to be a radical shift of changing the reality uh, which came across you know like many dimensions it's like a new oyo <laughs> yeah it came at you from all sides and you didn't see it coming let's face it there is just no way you saw that coming you saw you know i could i and we couldn't do what zomato did for example a lot of brands want to be zomato right i would love to be that brand i can't do it i can't put out content day on day that you'll fall in love with even if it is ad- as good you will not because it doesn't say zomato at the end of it the signature matters now as much as what the con- of course the content is fun it's high quality relatable fun content on food right something that's on top of our mind 24/7 really we eat lunch we we thinking what we're going to eat for dinner but uh the same level of content would not generate the same level of excitement coming from a brand like oyo it had to be from people yeah and people had to speak about it that was more important yeah zomato is doing a great job but the category also perhaps mayur that like you said food is always top of mind you always i mean that's the first way to celebrate anything or you know fill in for lack of celebration <laughs> yeah in absolutely. a day and and rooms you know will come uh, will will be so so even more commendable uh, if oyo gets into conversations because the category is something that you would not always be thinking about uh and i don't know what you feel about this i think the way humor has been used you know, it's um you know like they say that if you can't say it literally say it literally yeah. you know Uh, so i think that has been said especially when the change of opinion had to be so drastic you wanted people to open their minds you wanted people to open their hearts and those people who are not even considering or who have a negative perception right 
Yeah. So, uh, humor does that so beautifully, and 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 I think you know all the campaigns have done that. All the uh, you know, I mean, even when you're talking luxury, you 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 did it through Ghagra uh, in the Golf. <laughs> We just said we'll crack a joke on ourselves. You know, if it's if you like so many jokes uh, on us, you keep receiving them. Well, his the joke is on ourselves, but you know what? Uh, even with that joke, I'm seeding in a message that you will find it hard to forget. And if it's if it takes a guy playing golf in a Ghagra, then it takes a guy playing golf in a Ghagra. It's like a, a very impressive uh, influencer celebrities coming together. By the way, and <laughs> it was fun. <clears throat> We had a lot of fun, and I think uh, just the decision, as I mentioned before, and was important. Yeah. So one last thing now, because you were you talking about uh, conversations and content, and maybe a lot of brands are still struggling with how to get the content right, because you know uh, there is a brand, and there is there are certain associations, and you know how, how do you let go control and yet you know, keep it. Uh, and is it worth it you know how much are you going to invest behind it how, you know where is the roi what is the roi how do you evaluate yeah. it so many things so uh, so i would uh, request you to talk about the paper to pixel yeah and when i look at uh, which is a completely unique you know advertising strategy and when i look at the kind of topics that have been taken you know i mean it's it's totally from from, from what i felt is totally people you know led what would people want what would con- you know and, and not consumers if people want to read know about associate with in their life and yeah. then oyo comes into the picture so how how would you recommend you know to to go about this and how did you go about this actually you know again i think it's it's observation of what's happening in the world and i think this is, this goes back at least 4 years for me anyway where i started noticing uh, you know good friend of mine sadbir i remember he runs an agency of his own released uh, a nice campaign on true caller true caller right um, uh, it was on you know nicely written lines and i suddenly noticed uh, we're all on twitter right and i suddenly noticed people sharing that around um, you know and popped up on whatsapp chats as well even before that i noticed that whenever there was the rare occurrence of a i hesitate to call it traditional but i think the contemporary version of a good traditional ad press ad i think great words let me also not say ad i saw that i saw great words and the written word so to speak traveling uh sure slowly but surely to twitter i just saw this link about 4 to 5 years ago you know and when we when we came in here we have an association with hd uh you know we have they have they hold some some shares we get space as a trade off right and if you let's 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 be honest again right um the honest truth is uh, people reading in english daily are not necessarily booking hotel rooms not oyo hotel rooms anyway right so then you got to figure out how you use that right but like i said i think we were very clear from the beginning that we had a business problem to solve and i think if you look at come to oyo it very very clearly solves a business problem it transforms your business almost and equally we had a perception problem to solve right amongst a fraternity uh, which we knew was very important to a, to a brand that is going to list very soon you know, so whether we list this year or next year this fraternity remains important to us right this is where opinions are formed and i do believe this is where initial valuation is made alongside some very hard cold figures of course right um and some of the brands that we mentioned in our discussion would not have listed at the valuation they did if the brand hadn't been so strong uh, today of course market reality hits and all of that but i i do believe the initial valuation has a lot to do with perceptual valuation as well as uh, business valuation and i think that's something that that we decided we would do uh, in a in a very focused manner with with the work we did with hd you know i hesitate to call it print it happens to be print uh in our mind of course as always it was how can we almost be editorial in our thinking with a very very clear objective to organically transform or transfer ourselves or our conversations to the online world sometimes it it might need a little nudge from us sometimes it might need for us to point out to people hey have you seen this right it's not going to be paid we're not going to pay for it uh it's not valuable then but it has to be something that resonates people cuts across if it's mildly controversial 
we'll take that as long as it's in the right spirit because we know that there is no better breeding ground for conversation today than the online world right where who are you going to talk with once you see something that you've seen anywhere in the world the first thing you do is take a picture and you put it online that's where conversation actually starts right this is just like i said the little stone the the, the pebble that starts the avalanche was supposed to be what happened on the front page and it was always going to be the front page and nowhere else right it was always going to be if we could help it the quarter page the good old fps as we know it front page solus because we just believe it's a little more it's less less garish right the moment it's obscene you disregard it it becomes wallpaper so it almost had to feel editorial in a lot of ways while being unmistakably us and while making sure that it made people chat about it right and i feel we i don't know if we set a trend but today we see um press after press where people are trying to get people to interact with qr codes or get some conversation going or or wondering why is this a swiggy ad for example all of that is 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 something that's coming uh, down down the line from something we started about 4 5 years ago and very very deliberately uh, chosen in terms of what we would do as such as such if we say you know um i'm not going to be on an ipl i'm not a brand which has deep pockets right but i'm definitely going to be a, uh, at the olympics because it it is also very very true to who i am as a brand right people travel to to places to train etc and they stay in places like i know you uh when they do this right so I, if i have to represent either end i'll always be representing the olympians it's a no brainer for me as such i'll always be pointing that out to people and and always be evoking conversation and and a little bit of nationalism and even questioning how people are in the year of the olympics uh, you know as driven as they are by the ipl right i will always find a way as such to also make the olympics uh, very easy to follow for you on your on your devices right uh, and and that almost uh, gets me into your phones and everything else far easier than you would ever allow me otherwise because you know what the conversation is relevant to you yeah i will always uh, if i have to have a purpose it will always be safety uh, for women and i'll always put out an ad challenging social media networks who actually do nothing to enforce that safety mm-hmm. right uh long before we did the work on women safety and we can talk about that a bit more later mm-hmm. but uh, we would report all the comments that we saw on our social handles which was a lot of new contents comments and uh, the networks would do nothing frankly all of the networks they do nothing we, we would get a reply back saying hey you know what this doesn't violate our free speech guideline this is openly abusive and threatening to women and and it doesn't violate your you know your guideline and as a brand if i i don't necessarily go for the whole purpose thing but if i have to have a purpose it will be uh, about making a space safe right that is natural to who i am and as such i will take that to the front page and i will call out the social network for it and i know that will also then be picked up by other people who will resonate with it mm-hmm. so i think the whole thinking and in terms of what we intended to do with this space and what we knew its effect would be on brand's perception and who it would be with was very very clear again and i think i think most of the conversation we are having is you know the clarity of thought in terms of what we are hoping to achieve and sometimes we succeeded and i guess that's why we're talking yeah <laughs> yeah and there was fake news uh, there was poetry in different languages you know yeah. for diversity yeah. uh, around valentines day and there was like love mon- love the monday you know all those things that uh, are relevant and you, and you know there's a there's a new perspective uh which kind of you know and not just relevance i mean it's like a it's like a refreshing thought you know like an inspiring thought um uh, guiding it uh and and now we uh, you know let's talk about the show some respect orm thing because um uh, uh, as a woman i felt so nice about how it was done and when i read about it i'm like oh my god because uh it is really disempowering what would women do if something like this happens what would you do if 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 uh, you know the authority or the uh, you know people are not doing anything but were supposed to do what would you do you just step back right yeah. and 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 that's at at a huge cost for the brand uh, uh, you know oyo because yeah. like you said uh, half the people uh, the chur appealing to our women so that whole thing in terms of how uh it was conceptualized and how it was executed and how you put a team for it you know like 
doing it one by one, uh, very, yeah. very uh, in a focused manner across. I mean, it, it, I think it was very exemplary. So could you touch upon it? Yeah. Again, you know, I, I remember I, I mentioned that data tells us that 80% of our bookings come from men, right? Even more than 80%. Um, I, there's, there's a fundamental flaw here, right? Because if 76% are couples, then uh, that's two people, right? And both sexes. And so it doesn't make sense. And, you know, and when we spoke to, to women, and we did, you know, we had, uh, we knew they wouldn't necessarily open up to all of us. We have a team um, which had a lot of women in, in there. We made sure of that, right? And so we had the women talk to women who, who stayed, not stayed, never considered, not considered. And uh, here's what we understood from them. It's the women who pick where they're going to stay, when they're going to stay. It's the woman who takes the call. The guy simply presses the button. And we probe them further. They, the women tell us that they're not necessarily comfortable having the OEO app on their phone. Right? They don't not not necessarily their families or friends seeing that notification pop up from the app, right? And uh, if you probe further, it's all the again the pop culture lewdness associated uh, with the brand that basically pushes them away. So while this is not necessarily a here and now business problem. But it sure as hell is something that tomorrow will become a huge problem, right? It's almost death knell for a business for for fifty percent of its customers to literally hate its presence on their devices. Not a consumer tech business; they can't deal with that, right? So I think that was one starting point. Two, of course, as a team, we were shocked by what we saw when we came in uh, on our handles, and I noticed our own team members are not following it. Certainly, the women are not following it, you know, and. I'm like, you know, dude, you you run this brand. You gotta follow it to see what it's up to, right? And then you probe further and you realize there's just so much shit being said every time. Even if we don't post a woman's uh, picture on our handle, I mean, we don't have to post a woman's picture, frankly, right? You just have shit being said by people, you know, about is she available? Is she gonna come with room service? And it's it's sick. Uh, and so that was the second part. This is there's a very very big business problem that you can see. Uh, led by perception, there is uh, something that you feel as human beings that you're observing, and finally, uh, you know, and we've we've seen this over time, right? One of the most visible aspects of a brand on social media, in my opinion, is not necessarily the brand's posts, etc. It's actually uh, those bot responses saying, "We're really sorry this happened to you. Let's fix this for you. DM us your details," right? And I'm like, you know what? In any given day, mm-hmm. there's going to be about 50 to 100 of this. And in our case, you know, we're so widespread, you know, the thousands of tens of thousands of uh, rooms being used every night. Even if 1%, 0.1% goes off, that's like a few hundred responses. And some of it reaches social. That's like a whole bunch of responses that potentially you're going to see. Mm-hmm. Why does that not represent brand? Mm-hmm. A, that needs to be on brand. It can't be bought, mm-hmm. B-O-T bought. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and <laughs> and we, you know, if you give it a in quotes purpose and make sure it's on brand, then those are like fifty to hundred opportunities every single day to create brand. Actually, so I think it is again the combination of all these three which led us to say that one, it can't be a campaign to this state carries on. It's an initiative that we just speak about mm-hmm. at forums, etc. Uh, there's barely there's there's no money spent on it other than one printer print ad that we released frankly right it's a zero cost initiative that is run by ORM it did take a lot of uh, time and effort to work with ORM because ORM is not necessarily trained to be writers right to be to to be able to respond individually to a comment they're trained to take a template and uh, respond with it because that is the right way to do it frankly to manage an escalation that is their work but to ask them to double time and be writers something that they're not equipped for at all, actually took two years of workshopping with them every single week, which I did individually every single week, week with those guys. Uh, so yeah, that was that was worth the effort though. It was draining, but worth the effort. I think we transformed them, them to basically being representatives of brand and they're as much brand team today as, uh, as brand team is. So I think, yeah, so I think the problem was something we couldn't ignore. Uh, the benefits of uh, solving a problem like that were all brand. And I think as such, uh, tackling loot, loot comments and trolls who came and said 
I responded to so many of them individually as well. I was like, I'm going to slap you senseless and I'm going to pin up this comment so everyone sees it. And and I know for a fact, our country being our country, you know, 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 and I'm gunning for that. And I, and I know that if nothing else, the women will come in and join me in slapping you senseless. And as a result of it, if it it, it does great for my brand, great. But I'm, I'll am i just take vicarious pleasure of the, out of just bashing you up. Mm-hmm. How dare you come and say this on my uh, on my or any social media presence? Uh, uh, it's just not acceptable. Honestly, Mayur, when I when I when I saw this, you know, this, this the whole value that uh, Oyo, uh, you know, wants to stand for safety and bias for action. You know, I was like, my God, this is so commendable because nobody's doing it. You know, at at least as a consumer, I can say. Yeah. And then you know, the whole the, that people getting away with is getting encouraged you know because because of the anonymity and you know schooling was the word that you guys did right like if you schooled them you know like one tight slap don't do again and you know his and it's public bashing like like you know like uh, you shared earlier so and some of the comments honestly I, i was i was talking to sean it's like you know then that how this is so nice who thought of this comment? He said, this is all my youth. <laughs> I could help myself. I mean, like, we had a team doing it, but some of them, I would just say, hey, you know what, just pass that one to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one on. Yeah, because it sets an example, you know, that this is doable. And there's magic and grace in action, you know. Like, yeah. like once there is action, you know, it just things start. So, so it's thank you. It's, it's bloody minded. Yeah, I mean, thank you for seeing it. Uh, I think it's something <laughs> that people need to do. And, it, it's very human. I, I, I like doing things which are very human. It's not very, you know, press a button and it happens. Mm-hmm. You got to go comment by comment, person by person, and just just be, you know, very, very uh, vigilant about it. Because, you know, you can go the whole, hey, you know what, the machine is going to throw up what responses are coming and I'm going to then take care of it. Yeah, it just takes a lot out of uh, the human beings who are doing it. But I think the human response was to say, we're going to clean this, uh, pardon the French, but shit up. And uh, yeah, Q1 of this year, I recall asking the team, hey, how many uh, such resp- comments did we get? And I remember yeah, there was some, I don't know, 3,500 in 2019 when we started. Q1 of 2022, we had nine or 10 comments like this. Wow. Okay. They scrammed because they didn't see it coming again from a brand which is slapping them and then pinning it up for the world to see. It is a movement, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it, a movement doesn't have to be like, you know, mantras. It, it is a movement because, uh, and thanks from all the women, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you for seeing it. <laughs> We're playing Call of Duty now. Okay. So, uh, so we took it literally, right? You have to be rapid and theory. Otherwise, we shoot you. You keep sure. shooting. I don't shoot. Simple, right? Sure. So I'll shoot the questions and we start. Mother's best advice. Get a sweater pen. <laughs> You're referring to some ads. Beta sweater pen. Okay. Alternate profession could have been? Jam maker. I love, I love the thought of making jams and I would have messed around with them as much as I mess around with brand. As for your wife, your most often used phrase? Fuck it. <laughs> okay one thing no one knows about you i actually bake really well uh and i end, end up eating most of it but i bake really well oh nice uh good for naisha right yeah. okay a book you'd like to gift to all your friends blankets by craig thompson it's a it's a graphic novel which i dearly love um it's it's beautiful it's it's life what would you tell your 18 year old self? Don't do this shit. Your daughter's going to be watching later and you're going to regret it. Oh. <laughs> What's something new happening in your life right now? I'm trying to recover from a <laughs> surgery and get back to playing football. Okay. Okay. So you're watching it definitely. Uh, what's your, your favorite childhood memory? My mother's food. She's an awesome cook. I know most moms are. My mom's especially good. Oh, okay. If you were to devote the rest of your life to philanthropy, what cause would you choose? 
something to do with uh, teaching. My mom's a teacher, so I think it has a deep impact on me. What is your greatest joy? My daughter uh, riding a bike, learning something new. Okay. What is a lesson that took you a long time to learn? Not to control everything. You can't. To to try and curate things, to try and let people do what they're best at um, is a very hard lesson to learn. I'm still trying to learn. What's next? I have endearing love for food. So I'll like, probably, uh, probably, you know, I will be heading uh, marketing for a QSR entity which will have multiple food and beverage brands that it will acquire and um, progress. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I so hope Jam is one of them. I hope so too. <laughs> I'll try and make that happen at least. You did so well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so this is a wrap up now, Mayur. Uh, I'd request you to share any online addresses, any emails. Uh, how can people reach out to you uh, that you're okay? I'm I'm super easy to reach, super responsive on LinkedIn uh, or any of the other social media networks. My name is Mayur Hola, so that makes it uh, super easy to find me, not many Mayur Holas around in the world. Uh, or you can just mail me at mayurhola at gmail.com. And um, like I said, pretty responsive. <music>